Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Secret Base figure preview video. Before we begin, I want to say a massive thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out in person and snapping these gorgeous high-res pictures. Show Ryan some love in the comments below, because without him, this series literally wouldn't be possible. If you are heading down that way, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button, so you're notified as soon as a brand new figure preview video goes live on the channel. So today we're going to be discussing the second figure announcement in the Hono Studio line, aka Hot Toys Magneto. Their first announcement was actually a classic Tiger Stripe Wolverine, but unfortunately he was never put on display at Secret Base and therefore Ryan and I couldn't do a figure preview video on him. So for those of you who don't know what this Hono thing is, it's essentially Hot Toys budget brand. Still high quality, still 1.6 scale, but a little bit cheaper. Still Hot Toys, but budget friendly, if that makes sense. Think of it like uh, Hyundai and Genesis, or Toyota and Lexus. This is Hot Toys Toyota. So one of the drawbacks of going cheaper is that you don't get a ton of accessories. You only get two swap out hands in total. Closed fists and these sort of gesturing hands with magnets in the palms. Those screws that you see attached to his hands, they are not included. So, BYO screws, I suppose. Not sure exactly why Hot Toys felt that this Hono branding was necessary, considering I think that lower price point figures, as long as the quality is still good, wouldn't damage their brand at all. I think this could have been a proper Hot Toys release through and through. Look, I'm not complaining, it's just strange to me that they can go higher with the price point without rebranding like their DX Artisan line, but going lower? No, no, that's out of the question, we need a new brand for that because that would damage Hot Toys. I think that's complete bullshit, honestly. Now the stands are a bit strange for me. I like the idea of them, but they're large and they're deep and you've got this perspex thing around the back that you're supposed to slot a comic book into. I'm not a comic book collector, so I don't have one to pop in there, and even if I did, if you had multiple of these figures in the display in front of one another, that comic book behind them, yes, it would look cool, but it would block the figures standing behind this guy. Unless you have all of your Hono figures at the back and the rest of your X-Men figures are made by someone else entirely, or you go and find yourself a different display base. I think you can have the base without the comic, at least fingers crossed, I hope that's a possibility. He does have a split cut boot design and I dig the fact that they've sculpted in some textured sections and they've painted them red to match his spandexy outfits so that it looks like the boots are more so this structure made up of bands going up his calf where the red undersuit is poking through. It's not a perfect effect, it's close enough for me. Now the suit itself does look to be stretchy spandex with some screen printing over the top. I think they could have ditched the screen printed texture. The sideshow version of Magneto was great. A lot of people love that figure, me included. And he didn't have any of the screen printed dot texturing. He did have the panel lines and at the time I was thinking that that was a bit overkill. Now that I'm seeing just as many panel lines on this one, maybe I was a bit too harsh on the Sideshow Magneto. The Hot Toys panel lines at least are red rather than the dark brown colour from the Sideshow one, so they blend in a little bit better. Before you freak out, there's a spotlight pointed directly at his torso, so you see how you can see through the sheer red material to the base body underneath with the cut under the pecs for articulation? That's not going to be visible on display in your collection. It's just that they have a spotlight on him, so it passes directly through the fabric and bounces off the glossy plastic for the base body. I do like how tight the fabric is, so you can see the musculature poking through. His arms are a better representation of what he's supposed to look like in normal lighting, without the spotlight. Now this picture right here is pretty telling to me. They teased a Thor before they announced this Magneto, and I think Hot Toys were trying to capitalise on X-Men 97's two-episode drop. They rushed this guy out a little. 
There are some print lines on his gauntlets, and they've uh, hot glued his hand onto the blue wrist peg. Not really anything to be wary of, don't worry he's not going to leave the factory like this. It's just more so a peek behind the curtain in terms of how prototypes are made and sometimes rushed to meet a deadline. Now you do get some energy effects, which is more than I can say for most Hot Toys figures nowadays. They are translucent plastic, the middle section is quite spiky, and they do look generally quite similar to how his powers are depicted in either the X-Men animated series or the comics. They're more so meant to be just concentric circles. Still, I'm not complaining, I'd much rather have some energy effects than none at all. Okay, so let's discuss the head sculpt. Right off the bat, he's wearing his classic Jim Lee slash animated series inspired helmet. It's done in metallic red, and the purple is slightly metallic, just like all of the rest of the armour on his outfit. But it's not removable. And we only get one head sculpt with this angry expression. Bushy eyebrows raised, teeth gritted, and he's looking up ever so slightly. There's a little bit of skin texture, the way the eyebrows are sculpted is beautiful with the individual strands of hair, and the teeth look... fine. For now. Unfortunately, we know how these teeth gritted head sculpts can go sometimes. Just think back to the Ant-Man Paul Rudd head sculpt. The reason I bring that one up is because it was done in the same way as this sculpt, with the teeth not inset as a separate sculpted piece into the mouth, so there was no gap, it was one single plane, it almost looked 2D, there was this weird uncanny valley-ness about it. I'm thinking that Hot Toys would have learned their lesson from that Ant-Man sculpt and we won't see a repeat of that situation. Well, we sure as shit will find out when this guy releases. Just one more thing on the head sculpt quickly, when Magneto is using his powers, like on the comic cover behind him actually, his eyes are usually whited out. The Sideshow one had whited out eyes, whereas the Hot Toys one here has painted eyes. I prefer the painted eye look because it's just more detail, but if you wanted to touch them up with some white paint, absolutely go for it. His cape is two-ply and it's wired, which is 100% necessary for this particular look for Magneto. The way the cape swoops out and up over his shoulders, giving him this faux shoulder pad look, could only be achieved with wires, so I'm glad this guy has them. The material looks like it'll drape and flow well, but it will obey the wires. It shouldn't be a massive chore to work with, as we can see on display, it's holding its shape just fine and it looks how it's supposed to. Now one thing that I didn't love with their Wolverine was that it almost came across as though he was wearing a metallic blue coloured g-string, whereas with Magneto they've opted for proper trunks. I'm still hoping that they update their Wolverine and give him trunks like this because the G-String slash Budgie Smuggler just looked all kinds of wrong. We should start a hashtag, save Wolverine from his G-String. I'll keep an eye on the situation and if they update the Hono Studio Wolverine and eventually put him on display at Secret Base, we'll do a figure preview video on him as well. For Magneto, the colour scheme is quite vibrant. But the trunks don't match the colour of the cape, or the belt, or the neck collar piece, or the gauntlets, or the boots. So maybe they can use the same fabric they used for the cape on the trunks, because it does make them stand out a little bit more than I would like. Either way, dude, classic 90s looking X-Men figures by Hot Toys, I never thought I'd see the day and colour me excited and impressed. I cannot wait to see more and to build out my shelf with these Hot Toys slash uh, Hono Studio X-Men releases. Now if you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe, we'll catch you in the next video.